Hey guys, today we're going to look at how we can get the best value out of the Dwayne's dashboards here in Home Assistant. Now, if you're quite new to Home Assistant and all of this feels a little bit overwhelming, then check the link in the description below for my free Home Assistant starter course. Now, let's roll the intro. So my previous video, we looked at how to install the Dwayne's dashboard and what is the Dwayne's dashboard. Now I'm gonna talk you through the tweaks and the improvements that I've made on my end to configure it in the best way after a week. The first thing you're going to need to do is, is look at all of your areas that you have over here, go and sort them out. For example, you can see that there's a kitchen two at the bottom over here. If I click on it, it says zero entities. So what we need to do is, we need to go to the configuration Go to devices and services, go to areas. If you haven't been to areas in a while, it's actually changed, it actually changed recently. So I actually started uploading some photos uh, of the areas. So let's go to kitchen two. If we click it, we click this pencil button over here and we can simply delete. And we'll ask for a confirmation and just keep on deleting. Now the hallway, we've got information around the devices that are linked to the hallway as an area. We've got the scenes and the scripts and the automations that are actually targeting the area specifically. You can upload a photo and make it a little bit more recognizable if you want to. So once you've sorted out the areas, it actually is a really good time to clean up your integration. So if you have any error messages or if you have any device that you don't actually use, uh, go here and sort it out. Now I've sort of cleaned up my one. One place where I had a lot of uh, dead devices was in the ZHA. The ZHA configuration, if you look at the status, which is right here on the right hand side, uh, now all of them are quite good. But if you have any of them that have any issues, you can go and clear them out. The more entities you clear at this stage, the less entities will be pulled into the Dwayne's dashboard automatically. So once you clean up the devices, the entities should match and follow up through. Now that we've sort of sorted that all out, let's go back to the Dwayne's dashboard. Now let's look at the day in staff in a little bit more detail. Now the areas have a cool summary. So if we click on the three dots, edit mode. Here we can reposition the areas as we wish and we can edit an area. Now what I've done over here is added an MDI icon for each area and then I've added a floor. So depending on how many floors you have your home, I've started with zero, you can start with one, and it's up to you. And then what that enables you to do is, is you can do something like group by floor. So if you group by floor, you can start seeing all of the areas that are at a certain floor. So let's exit the edit modes. Now, if we come over here, we can see we have two and zero. So these are the lights that are on, and these are the switches. Here we have motion sensors linked to the kitchen. We have the hallway, we have a landing. So this also is some work in progress that I sort of need to continue doing. We have also the little symbol of media that sits over here. On the top side, I actually made changes to here too. So I disabled the clock now, and I've also disabled the welcome message. This is really up to you. If you do that, they actually uh, compacts it all up. So it makes it easier to navigate, for example, on tablet. I have added uh, the home as the weather entity. So I've added a weather entity and the alarm over here that we can then control. So we can click on it and we can get onto the alarm panel. Now this area over here, I'm not quite sure if you can actually change it, uh, which is useful, but there were things that I want to remove, for example, the Fire OS and the iPad, um, but I don't seem to be able to do that. I'm not too sure how I can actually modify this part of the Dwayne's dashboard, which sort of uh, is, is one point of improvement. Now, by default, most of the sensors will come across in this little uh, box over here, like we saw previously. Now if we click on the three dots and we go into enable edit mode. Now if I scroll down, you can see that the following entities are unavailable. And you can see some entities have been excluded. You can also exclude entities yourself that you don't really want to see. So for example, if we don't want to see the uh, current uh, or anything really, we could just go three dots and we can either hide entity in DD, DD is Dwayne's dashboards, or disable the entity. If I hide the entity, now you'll see the entity will uh, shift downwards and it will go over here. And you can actually go back and unhide the entity if you want to. So you can click on unhide the entity and you can put it on top. So everything that's unavailable automatically follows through and goes at the bottom. Now we have these add cards, um, which I wanna show you in a bit more detail. So hold on and in the meantime, 
you're gonna like this video and if you're getting value out of it, remember to subscribe to this channel to get more Home Assistant dashboard videos. Now I wanna show you something a little bit special that I've done. Now there are two crucial things you need to understand about how these Dwayne dashboards work. Now if I go over here to edit mode again, and I'll show you, we have the drag and drop feature, right? So we can move cards around. Now we saw that in our last video, fine. But what we can do, and what we really, what I really didn't show you last video, is you can go on the three dots and you can actually change the card itself. So you click on entity card and you go on Lovelace card. Here you can search for a, a light card or anything you want. So if I go to the mushroom light card, click on it. Now you need to put the entity back in again. For some reason it loses the one that we had. And here we can toggle, for example, like brightness control and uh, color control. So if I submit this, right, you see that this is changed. So I can turn the light on. I can change the uh, brightness if I wanted to. Uh, so I can do things as I wish. But the cool thing is that this has kept the drag and drop feature. Why do I mention it, right? Well, this is why, because if you add the card from here, so if you click add card and you go on Lovelace card, and then you go and click, um, let's add the same light again, right? Just to give you a demo. The first thing you see that it appears over here. The, the real problem is you can't really move it. So you've got the move here. So now you've got this light, which is stuck at the top and you can't really change anything about it. So that's really one downside, and I'm pretty sure that this is um, will be fixed in the future. So I'm just gonna remove it. So for now, the best way to, if you wanna change the card, is to actually find the entity itself and change it, and then move it around. And then you can do all sorts of things like we saw in the previous video, so we can actually change uh, the, the, the span, right? So we can say, okay, this is now a two column uh, span, so we can see that uh, leaving to filling up uh, over here. Now, if I go to the kitchen, now you can see that I've done something right over here. Now I've created little uh, chips over here. I've created a media player. I've got some other uh, chips, mushroom chips. I've got a vacuum. So this piece over here that you can see, this block, I actually created it myself. And what I did was, right, I mean, you could, if you're very organized, you could add card, and then add the vacuum and then add again and add the chips and add again and add the volume control. But what the problem with that is that if you do that and then you want to change anything or you can't reorder it, right? You're gonna have to re, basically re-manually do everything. I don't think there's a way even by a code to change it. So what I would do recommend you do is uh, pick a, a dashboard area, any. So for example, just pick something like this. So I created a dashboard somewhere else and what I did was I created my own grid card, okay? So I created my grid card and I customized it over here, you know, so I can, I've added all of these uh, senses over here. So I've got my temperature, fridge temperature, if it's open or not, uh, you know, all sorts of things going on. So once you've built this all up, um, in my case, I'm using smarter things like conditional cards for the media player to show which one I'm using. And I'm also using the custom mini media player over here to display this and to control, pause and change the volume. But the point I wanna show you in this video is if I uh, get the code, right, and copy that code in, once you've got the code in, go back to your Dwayne's dashboard, paste in the type, okay? Now I'm gonna have this expand for the three columns to give it all of the space it needs. Click on submit and now you can see it all coming through. Now you can see the vacuum is actually doubled up so what I actually did was, I, the vacuum, I actually changed the card. You can see it's a drag and drop. So it's something I've changed. So I can go into here and I can just remove the vacuum from the end because you don't need it. And I'm gonna submit. If you're into media like I am, I'm gonna show you a little trick. So if you modify this, right? And if you go to edit mode and let's go to the chips. So at the end, we've got some chips and I can add the chip, right? And I can say entity and edit with the pencil over here and I'm gonna look for Sonos. I can look for something like Night Sound, right? And I can add another one, Speech Enhancement. I can click Submit. So there's still much more to cover. I'm not there yet in building and finishing up my wall panel. As soon as I am, I'm gonna be publishing another video. Let me know in this conversation down below what you thought about this video and if you're interested in the next video. I'm gonna leave you this video over here where you can find out more about the mushroom cards that I used in this video. See ya.